All right, I am going to make this audio recording for SoundCloud because I just listened to some of the craziest stuff the whole day with the Cohen testimony. I was basically glued to it. I didn't even go to lunch. And to be honest with you, I did hold back from uh, going to the bathroom. <laughs> so, I, you know, there was a break, but in the end, <coughs> you know, I listened to virtually all of it. And <coughs> I have to say that Michael Cohen, the, the decision to put him in the U.S. Congress to testify today, I, I really don't understand why the Democratic members of the House Committee on, on uh, I guess it was the House Committee on Oversight, led by Elijah Cummings, I don't know why they wanted him to appear before the committee and basically lay bare that the entire basis of their whole business going forward, their business as the committee, is going to be just a farce. It's going to be subpoena after subpoena of this person with this receipt and this person with with this uh, statement, <coughs> this person with this check, and then there's going to be accounting forms and things like that. And ultimately, what what was gained throughout the day? <laughs> well, apparently, the Democratic Party, Adam Schiff, Elijah Cummings, and Jerry, Jerry Nadler, who are the committee chief, the committee chairs of the House Committee on Intelligence, the House Committee on Oversight, and the House Judiciary Committee, they are looking, f they're trying to essentially rely <coughs> on the testimony of a person who, not only was he already convicted of lying to Congress, as well as <coughs> numerous financial crimes, such as uh, bank fraud, <coughs> they, they feel that he should be the basis for their case at proving that Donald Trump is a liar or that he engaged in, in, in such crimes. And I don't know if this, like, I, I can see the, the immediately <laughs> the flaws in this strategy, probably like a possum can see a semi-trailer <laughs> bearing down on it on the highway. It just doesn't make any sense. Why would they, why, why would they have Michael Cohen, who in, in the actual committee hearing today, seemed to lie several times and they, they caught him on it they caught him saying for example this was a big moment he, they, they caught him saying that he doesn't have any interests from foreign governments such as contracts or payments and it, it was revealed so so he actually no he did reveal that he he had those contracts and payments from uh, a bank in Kazakhstan which is majority owned by the Kazakh government and uh, later it arose that it was the Korean, Korean Aerospace Industries, which is also owned by a number of state uh, enterprises over in, in South Korea. So <coughs> he, he'd, he'd filled out a, a disclosure form that same day, today. He filled out a disclosure form prior to appearing before the committee, affirming that he didn't have any of those contracts. So he basically has, has committed perjury again today then you have <coughs> then you have people who came forward and they validated that a statement he made that he was not looking for a position in the Trump White House is is false okay so this is a person who's already lied before to the committee uh, I think it was last year and he's going to jail for it <laughs> he's already going to jail for at least three years at this point so Michael Cohen now has lied about a couple of things. He's lied about, uh, you know, he lied during his, while filling out his disclosure form as far as which contracts he had with foreign governments. And he also lied, uh, allegedly, about, about seeking a, an appointment to the White House through a number of people that knew Donald Trump. So the people that <coughs> asserted that he's been lying they, they'll have to come forward and they'll have to present proof and it's it's possible that their that their testimony you know th this is a this is a game of hearsay at this point but the other other fascinating moments from the hearing which I I was so spellbound by I was hypnotized 
Michael Cohen wouldn't, he would not uh, let go when asked if, if he was gonna, going to make money for uh, any of these uh, book deals or film, film publications, book publications, film, film making deals. He said that he was not going to commit to not taking payment for it or donating the payments to charity. That was a huge knock to his credibility, which was already very, very low. Then another great moment <laughs> that, I, that I think was very indicative of the, you know, the, the, the character of Michael Cohen was when he was pinned down that he was he had recorded his client Donald Trump and the, the you know the congressman who asked it I think it was some guy from either Texas or Colorado <coughs> I don't even remember his name he asked him you know how many times did you did you tape clients and and he he couldn't give a number it was it was well over 100 or 200 people so Michael Cohen <coughs> which Michael Cohen basically admitted that it's, it wasn't only Donald Trump that he taped, okay? It wasn't only Donald Trump. It was, it was several other clients of his who were having their confidence basically violated by him as a lawyer. And he, he made the excuse, well, this, this, is, a better, this is a better way for me to, <coughs> to remember things that have been exchanged with a client instead of note-taking. That doesn't justify it. He, he did not notify the client when he recorded them. Now that's not a violation of the law, but apparently it is a violation of some sort of uh, attorney ethics code. And, and uh, in, in many ways, the whole hearing today was a violation of his attorney-client privilege. He was disbarred yesterday. He, he can't even have, there, there's nothing about Michael Cohen that really inspires any degree of credibility. Uh, other other moments. There was one point when a congressman asked him, you know, basically the uh, one of the salient points of the whole of the whole hearing was that Cohen was alleging that Donald Trump had made this uh, direction to him to give payments to Stormy Daniels, and that the, these checks that were written to him were disguised as a lawyer's retainer. But in reality, they were in order to pay hush money to Stormy Daniels. Now, what, what really hurts Michael Cohen was that he admitted that despite the fact that he tapes his clients, and despite the fact that as a lawyer, you, you might think that he, he would want to have certain things under the re on the record, he doesn't have any record of anything. He doesn't have a recording. He doesn't have any, any uh, statement. He has nothing, nothing that could be admitted could be submitted as evidence that the payments were to Stormy Daniels. So <coughs> let's be clear for a second. That doesn't mean that the payments were not for Stormy Daniels. That means that Cohen's entire chain of, of action where he was claiming that Donald Trump was instructing him and directing him to, to do this and that, that Trump's, uh, his, his, his accountant, Weisselberg, whatever his name was, Adam, I think it's Adam Weisselberg. He was claiming the whole time that these, the, <laughs> that Trump was hinting at him that he wanted him to, to do certain things. He wasn't explicitly directing him. Now, I don't think you have to be a world-class attorney, which, which I'm, I'm not even an attorney of any type, but you realize that this is not great evidence. It's, it's actually pretty, pretty clear that, you know, it's, it's almost as if Cohen is saying, well, Trump, Trump basically tried to control my mind and have me, as the lawyer, do things that were wrong. <coughs> so, essentially, what, what, were, what was learned today? A, Michael Cohen is a liar. B, Michael Cohen was, was a horrible attorney who would break the rules. And C, that the, the, Democrats, the Democrats on the committee were, were basically willing to have this guy sta sit on the stand for hours, ask him the same questions every time, while the, the Republican committee members, Jordan and Meadows, essentially took a sledgehammer to Cohen's, Cohen's uh, credibility. Uh, an another factor was Cohen's whole narrative that he was disgusted with the president's behavior, that he didn't like the racial tone of his entire administration, 
and the, the various things that he'd said about about black people or whatever and things that and he, he alleged that the president trump had said derogatory things about black people to him in private none of which he ever recorded okay so the guy who who records his clients and, and does things like that so now now he's cut and he's he's been he's been convicted of lying to congress so now he's going to come out and try to make as if he's a credible witness to, to the character of the president you it's it's not good for i'm speaking as somebody who's who's not who's who's let's say i'm a juror okay i'm, I'm not a lawyer but i can i can say for sure that as a juror if i see somebody if i hear somebody that is is uh just pathologically lying asserting things about somebody else's character i wouldn't consider that person a, a credible witness and it's it's shocking to me that the Democrats thought that this would be a good move. And I, I don't know, maybe maybe in, in the long term they have some sort of uh, good uh, strategy to make out of this for them, even though I don't, I don't, agree, with, <laughs> I don't agree with the basic course of action here. But if, if, you're, if you think that Michael Cohen's testimony today helped anybody like, like, uh, to, 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 to uh, erode the credibility of Donald Trump, you're out of your damn mind. Uh, there, there was another incident <laughs> closer to the end. I kind of wanted to go home, but there was an there was an incident where uh, one of the Congress Congress women on the Democratic side, Rashida Talib from Michigan, made this insinuation that because one of the character witnesses that appeared for Trump, who was a black woman who had uh, been been a Jim, she, she'd survived Jim Crow and she'd r risen to be a senior official, I guess, in one of Trump's organizations. So she was there as a character witness to dispute Cohen's allegations. So Talib alleged that she, she was being used as a racial prop. And she tried to, and, and the insinuation was that one of the Republican committee members which would have been Mark Meadows had done that. And Meadows stood up and objected. I was watching this on the Hard Bastard channel. He stood up and objected and he said, look, look this, this is ridiculous. This whole entire hearing is, is just mischaracterizations, but, but now they're mischaracterizing him. They're, they're mischaracterizing him as racist because he, he took a racist action of, of, of calling as a witness a person who was, uh, you know, happened to be black as as a counter as a counter testimony to michael cohen who is a liar so that, let's let's think about that for a second the 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 lady who was called by i guess you could call them the defense even though that's not the situation here but the the republicans had called this lady who's a black lady from the south had worked for donald trump for years and she has no criminal conviction for bank fraud she has no criminal conviction for uh, for, for lying to Congress. She has no criminal conviction for any, any other sort of uh, crimes. And then she, she hasn't been disbarred for violations of attorney ethics rules. <laughs> so she, she's the prop, but not Michael Cohen. Not Michael Cohen, the, the, the lawyer who's already been convicted and whose credibility is, is basically so, so perforated by now that I'm sure that when he comes home at night, his wife must wonder if he might be one of the lizard people that landed from the Andromeda galaxy. It's it's ridiculous. So that's about it. Uh, I just wanted to share my thoughts. It, it was a what? I, I can't believe that I listened to so much of it, but it was just it, it it had me completely mesmerized. And that's about it. So please like this video or the. Uh, what's it called? The SoundCloud, if you're on the SoundCloud, the, the podcast. Please subscribe to whatever medium you're, you're listening to this on, whether it's YouTube, BitChute, or SoundCloud, or, or for that matter, CocoScope, if it is on CocoScope. And please like the video or podcast. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Uh, might have a live stream tonight with Soon Fei Yang concerning Brexit. I don't know yet if it's going to happen because just been very glued to the glued to the testimony today but I'll talk to you guys later bye bye